Hey folks, Colin here from Something's Recording, and today I want to show you two ways you can use the Layers function inside of PreSonus Studio One. We're going to be talking about layers inside of Studio One today, but before we dive in, if you're ready to go a little bit deeper into the mixing process as a whole and really start to hone your workflow as an engineer, then I have just the thing for you. It is my seven step mixing checklist and it's just a simple PDF that will walk you through the entire mixing process step by step to help you get professional and radio ready mixes without any more guesswork and without any more of the hassle. It is a completely free guide and you can download it below using the link in the video description. Now let's jump in here and talk about layers. First of all, what are layers? Inside of Studio One, layers are these pieces down here. So if you right click on your track, if you have layers, you can click expand layers. If not, you can come down here to layers. And if you add a layer, you can see it pushes your top piece of audio down to a different layer down here. So layers are different, whether it's takes or different edits of your vocal. Those are things you can hide in layers down below. And if you ever need to get back to them, you can just right click, expand your layers and push them back up to the top. So you can save different takes, you can save different edits or different bounces of your vocal or of, of your different audio inside different layers. That's the layers function there. And there's a couple different ways you can get to them. There's options over here to expand your layers or again, right clicking and expanding layers. You can add layers, duplicate layers, rename layers and remove layers as well. If you put things to the top, you can right click and remove that layer, push a different one to the top there. So what are the two ways you can use layers inside of Studio One? Or the two ways that I use layers inside of Studio One? The first way is different vocal takes or different takes of your audio. Usually you see it done on vocals, but you can do it across any tracks. You could do it on drums, a little bit more convoluted to do it on drums, right? Because you have to create a layer for each piece here, and then you have five, six, eight different layers you gotta deal with. Vocals is probably the simplest way, or even on piano and guitars. If you're just doing a bunch of different takes uh, of a track, you can use your layers function to save those different takes. And then you can bounce different pieces up to the top. So say I did a take of this vocal, and then I was like, oh, it's sounding okay, I wanna do another take here. So we can go right click on our track, layers, add a layer. Now we have a clean slate here to do another take of our song. So if we wanna hit record here on this track, So I can record a different layer here and then I can open things up here and I can see I have my original take here and then I have a new layer. I have one saved of edits, we'll talk about that in a second. But say I did this take here and that's all I wanted to do. I liked the rest of the song. All you have to do is you can come down here and you can see it turns to the range tool here and we can highlight different pieces of this to shoot back up to our main layer. So say I liked from the third line on here of this take, I can highlight it and it will boost it up to our main layer of the vocal take. So you can kind of go through and pick different pieces of different takes. So say I liked this piece better. You can push that up and then say I wanted this piece of this take, I can push that up. So you can combine different pieces of different takes into one master take or one master comp at the top line or on your main layer up top. So that is the first way you can use layers. And again, you can go all the way through your track. You can be as wide or as not wide as you want, as sparse or as not sparse as you want across your track to build like a master take. And I think they automatically fade together. Yeah, as you put them up, they automatically cross fade together if they line up like that. Otherwise, they can kind of sit apart. If we have gaps here, It'll leave your gaps, but it'll add nice little fades going in and out here, which is pretty nice. So there's no hard stops and no hard starts going through your track there. So it adds nice little fades to make sure everything's clean going in and out there. So that's the first way you can use layers. We're gonna get rid of all that stuff I just did. And we're gonna talk about the second way you can use layers. So one of the most, one of the ways I use layers most inside of Studio One is saving edits or different bounces of different tracks. So if I finish editing a vocal, right, I get rid of breaths or silence in a vocal, so different edits, so if I'm getting rid of wide pieces like this and adding fades into my vocal, stuff like that, before I bounce it to one solid track, I'll go to layers and I'll duplicate the layer 
So I have that layer below. And then I'll call it something like you can see above, lead vocal edit, I'll call it edits. So I know if there's something I mess up, if there's a part inside the vocal where maybe I edited too much, the fade's too harsh, I can always expand my layers, pull my edits up to the top, fix it, maybe I need a little bit longer on this end here, then I can get rid of the other one, redo it, and send it back. So rebounce it, as you will. Okay, so that's one of the ways you can use layers, which is one of the ways I use layers the most, is saving different edit points of vocals. I always like to have an edit to go back to. So you can see the edit for this vocal here. Getting rid of different S's and T's and sibilance ranges all the way throughout our vocal. So if there's gaps here where maybe there's a breath, I'll pull the breath down a little bit. But I save that edit. So if I'm listening through later and maybe I pulled that breath down too much, it sounds unnatural in the vocal, I can just push this back up to the top by clicking the layer button here. It'll shoot it right back up to the top. And I can pull this back up in volume if I need to make that breath a little bit more natural sounding. And then rebounce the track, resave a different layer. The other way you can do it is also one of the ways I do it beforehand. I don't like to use compression while I'm recording. I do compression on the back end. So I get my vocal take done. And then over here, if we click our I, you can enable event effects and then pull maybe the stock compressor on. Do a little bit of compression on your vocal here. And then you can actually render this onto the actual audio piece. And in that case, before I do something like that, what I'd want to do is what I'd want to save a layer. So I'd right click on my track, come down to layers, duplicate the layer. And then I'd call it something like uncompressed, right? So I know if I get done with my compression and I bounce it and maybe there's too much compression on it or when I'm mixing, I find my vocals too compressed, it's over compressed and I'm fighting that in the mix, I can always expand my layer and say, oh, here's my uncompressed vocal. I'm just gonna push that back up and I'll mix with the uncompressed vocal. But it's a nice function to have there so I can do stuff like this. I can put compression on if there's EQ I need to do before mixing, if there's stuff I wanna bounce to the track. So maybe it's a little bit too crazy uh, dynamic wise. I can put a limiter on, do a little bit of limiting across my vocal and then bounce that to the audio track pre-mix. So there's stuff you can do processing wise after the recording phase, but pre-mix phase, that you can bounce to your track, but you can save different layers here. So say there's one uncompressed, and then I want a layer before I do a little bit of limiting. So I can create a layer, call it unlimited. Ooh, if I can spell right, I can call it unlimited, close my layers there, and then if I want to enable event effects, pull a limiter over, and then bounce some limiting onto this track, I can. So I could bounce this down if I wanted to do some limiting on my track. So it would render it to the actual piece of audio here. And then if I say later, oh, track's a little bit too limited, I can always expand my layers here and say, oh, good, I have an unlimited version that I can just put back up to the top here kind of saves you if you make any mistakes down the road. So if you make any bad edits, if you over compress your vocal, if you do too much limiting or too much EQ, anything on the way in, you can always have these nice layers as a safeguard that you can pull back up later to make sure you have a good raw vocal. Whether it's too compressed, too limited, or you did too many edits, pulled down breaths too much, always save layers before you bounce anything. So before you commit anything to your audio, save a layer so you can go back later to grab that if you do happen to make a mistake. Layers can get pretty convoluted, so let's do a little bit of review here. The two ways that I use layers or that you can use layers inside of Studio One when you're recording, when you're mixing, number one is different takes of different audio tracks. So if we have our vocal here, we can record different takes. So say I recorded the vocal and then I'm like, okay, that's a good take, but I wanna do another one. We can go to layers, add layer, It'll throw that down to the bottom here, and then I can record another take of the vocal, and then patch pieces in from earlier takes. So if there was maybe a second verse that I liked better from this take, or first verse I liked better from this take, I can patch those things up to the main vocal, and then it will automatically fade these pieces together, and you can bounce a new master take of the vocal. That's the first way we can use layers. The other way you can use layers is to save different iterations of your track. 
So before you bounce or commit anything to your track, you can create a layer so you can always get back to it later. Or <laughs> later, excuse me. So if you do a bunch of edits on your vocal for breaths or for S's and T's, you can create a layer of those edits if you need to get back to it before you bounce it to one clean track. If you want to put compression on your vocal before you get to the mixing stage, you can create a layer of the uncompressed vocal take before you bounce compression using event effects or what have you bouncing to a new track. You can create a layer so you can get back to that uncompressed vocal if you need to. I hope that was helpful for you. As I mentioned at the beginning of the video, if you are ready to take your mixes to the next level and really start dialing in your workflow as an engineer, then I have just the tool for you and it is completely free. It is my seven step mixing checklist and you can download it below to start creating more professional mixes in less time. Thank you so much for watching today and I will see you in the next video.